Thank you. Thank you. It is, it is an honor to be speaking here tonight. I, uh, you know, the month that we just finished is, month of Mar the month of March that we just finished is uh, National Women's History Month. And here at Health Fest, one of the things that we're going to be focusing on is how to get women's medical histories less cluttered with diagnoses, such as um, infertility, uh, pelvic pain, hot flashes. And uh, these are just some of the many issues for which my patients are seeking help as they come to see me in my uh, private family practice near Austin, Texas. And we're talking about hormone imbalance and how I help people overcome too much estrogen. And too much estrogen can be even found in a man. And how I help some of my vegan patients overcome too much of their estrogen. But were you even aware that a man or a woman can have excessive levels of estrogen? Now science tells us that pharmaceutical estrogen can be associated with an increased risk of cancer, but I'm talking about the internal kind of estrogen, the kind we make inside our own bodies. And uh, people don't realize that all that estrogen could suppress a man's testosterone and it can cause high blood pressure. Did you know that more than two-thirds of the people in this country, by the time they're age 65, need blood pressure medications? And so uh, if we understand that the problems caused by excess estrogen are caused because there, there are many, too numerous to list on this slide, but it can cause blood clots, such as in your leg, or in your eye, resulting in blindness, or in your heart, where we call it a, what? A heart attack. And it can clog the arteries leading to your brain, resulting in a stroke. That's right. And growth is good, and estrogen is a growth promoter, and growth is good if you're a baby. But too much growth, growth out of control, that could be associated with cancer. And I'm talking today not just about the um, uh, hormonal cancers, the uterus and, and, and prostate cancer, but also I'm talking about uh, skin cancer, brain cancer, thyroid, lung, colon. It's been associated with an excess of estrogen. And how do we know this? Well, men who get prostate cancer are sometimes given a shot called Lupron, and it suppresses their testosterone level so much that they get hot flashes, which they hate. And um, there are many types of cancers that if you have an excess of estrogen, you're not going to get them while you're over-estrogenizing yourself, but later in life. Now, do I need a blood test, doctor? Well, the blood test may not tell the whole story for two reasons. And those two reasons are, number one, the bell-shaped curve, and number two, the kind of estrogen that really matters is at the cellular level, where you cannot measure it with a blood test. First, the bell-shaped curve, which gives us the normal reference range. It's so broad in this country because so many Americans are over-estrogenized. And you may fit within the uh, range of the bell-shaped curve and yet have too much estrogen for you, where it may be causing heavy monthly bleeding. Uh, and foods and beverages can be contributing to that. And the bell-shaped curve may reflect where we are in this country, not where we should be. And the second reason is that the watery part of the blood, the, the serum, that's where we do blood tests. But this um, estrogen is it's wrapped in a protein wrapper, and it may be stuck to the red blood cell where you can't measure it. And so your blood test may be normal while you're suffering some of the causes of excess estrogen. So let's talk about those eight ways that we can imbalance our hormones, or conversely with better choices, that we can rebalance our hormones. The first is dairy. Dairy, eating dairy products provides us with way too much estrogen. There are more than seven building blocks of estrogen in cow's milk, and that's too much for human health because cow's milk is perfect for growing an 80-pound baby calf into an 800-pound yearling in one year. However, um, there's uh, too much estrogen in cow's milk, and the reason for that is cows are milked throughout their pregnancy, raising the estrogen level from 17 up to more than a thousand during their pregnancy. And that's just the um, milk that is, uh, that's just the organic milk, not even talking about the milk treated with, hum with uh, bovine growth hormone. And this book, uh, Whitewash, helps us to understand many of the scientific studies that can validate some of the things that I'm gonna tell you tonight. Uh, 
Number two, too much fat raises our level of estrogen. Eating um, too much fat can raise our level of estrogen. And this is all kinds of fats, even plant-based fats, especially the higher fat plant-based foods. Uh, the next is wearing too much fat on our body. Our adipose tissue is like an estrogen factory. Every fat cell in our body is like an estrogen factory. The, third, the fourth reason is that drinking caffeine can raise estrogen levels. Even if you don't drink it, even if you're eating it in cacao from which chocolate is made, or coffees, teas, sodas. This research was published in February of 2012. Other causes of estrogen are eating cholesterol, which as you know is found only in animal products. There is no, there is no cholesterol to speak of in plant-based foods. You see, the cholesterol that we take in if we're eating meat, dairy, and eggs gets turned into estrogen in our adipose tissue, in our body fat. Take a look at these molecules. On the top, you see the estrogen molecules. I'm, I'm referring to estrogen in this uh, short talk, but there's really more than seven of them. But collectively, I'm just calling them estrogen. And see how similar they are to cholesterol, to testosterone. These are sterile compounds, and uh, uh, progesterone also similar. And uh, when we eat animal products, we're excessively raising our level of estrogen where it can cause a lot of problems. Suppressing testosterone, causing maybe low T in a man, and perhaps loss of libido for women. Another thing that relates to uh, excess estrogen is not getting enough fiber. Fiber is found only in plants, and fiber is like a sponge that soaks up estrogen and then carries it out of the body in the solid waste, flush. You see, um, fiber is important because 24-7, our liver is like a washing machine. It's taking the estrogen out of the circulation, sending it down a little tube called the bile duct, where it dumps it into the small intestine where it's hoping for a sponge called fiber to soak up that estrogen and carry it out in the stool. And by the way, while that fiber is doing that important task, um, before it gets to the small intestine, it's taking up room in our stomach and yet adding no calories. So the, the filling, the satiety that provides in our stomach makes fiber the weight loss miracle because you don't have to fight your hunger drive. You can eat uh, to your fill on this type of a diet. And so if there's not enough fiber early in the day, like, like beans and, and, and greens, if there's not enough fiber at the breakfast, then that estrogen that the liver was working so hard to take out gets absorbed back into the bloodstream by the little finger-like projections in the small intestine called intestinal villi. And back into the circulation it comes, doing damage, the estrogen does, in a process called enterohepatic circulation. Entero means intestines, and hepatic means liver. Uh, and if we have a lack of fiber in our diet, it's often because we don't have the place where fiber is found, which is in plants. And uh, there is no fiber in meat. There's no fiber in eggs. There's no fiber in dairy. There's no fiber in oil, even though oil is plant-based. And so the less fiber, the more disease and the more estrogen. Now here's someone who doesn't have a problem with hormonal imbalance. This is Rip Esselstyn. And he, you may remember him from the movie Forks Over Knives. He was climbing up the fire pole using only his hands, not using his legs, saying, real men eat plants. And uh, I'm just so grateful that I had the chance to be hired by Rip Esselstyn uh, for the first of the Engine 2 immersions. Drinking alcohol is the seventh reason why estrogen levels could get excessive. Now you can understand how that could be so, because you know that alcohol is metabolized by the liver, and so anything that distracts the liver from its very important task of taking estrogen out can make the liver not focus on taking estrogen out because the body has to swing into action. The liver has to, to forget about the estrogen for a minute and immediately metabolize alcohol because if it doesn't, the body may go unconscious. And the body understands that going unconscious is not a good thing. I mean, you, it could lead to injuries. It could lead to unintended pregnancies. And so the body doesn't want to, the body doesn't want to let the uh, alcohol get ignored, and so it ignores the estrogen. And thus, you can see how drinking alcohol contributes to a rise in estrogen levels. 
And our eighth reason why you could get too much estrogen inside of you is that animal feed contains hormones and antibiotics. Now, why would the rancher spend his hard-earned money putting uh, hormones into the feed of his beef and pork and chickens? Because hormones are growth promoters, and he's selling by the pound. Antibiotics also promote growth. And what, what percentage do you think uh, of all the antibiotics produced in this country um, go into the feed of animals that are not sick? 80%, that's right, 80% of all the antibiotics produced in this country are going into the feed of healthy animals, some of them labeled organic. Oh yeah, there's not enough inspectors out there to stop this kind of law breaking. And so, I am indebted to Dr. John McDougall and so many of the presenters here for the things that I have learned. Dr. John McDougall says that the fat that we eat is the fat that we wear, and I say it's also the estrogen that we make. And I am grateful that I was hired to um, see these miracle stories, these success stories firsthand. And I was hired by Rip Esselstyn uh, because Whole Foods Market wanted to lower their health care costs. You know, health care costs are such a big problem for GM that they spend more money on health care for their employees than they do buying steel every year. Starbucks spends more money on health care costs for its employees than they do buying coffee beans every year. Can you believe it? And uh, let's, let's look at some of the exciting success stories that came uh, as Whole Foods Market twice a year in the spring and the fall flew in their very sickest employees from around the world. Oh, I did it, didn't I? Sorry. <laughs> the, the employees with the biggest health challenges, the highest cholesterol, the most diabetes, the highest blood pressure or cancer. And they flew them in to eat uh, delicious food in a retreat that was as fun as summer camp. Uh, and there were, um, the food was the focus. As Rip says, it's the food. And they ate an oil-free, low-fat, plant-nutrient-rich vegan diet for one week to see how well, in a beautiful resort setting just north of Austin, Texas, it would lower the health care costs for Whole Foods Market and improve the health of those employees. Oops. Rip Essenston is still the uh, CEO of the Engine 2 Immersion, and he is Austin's um, uh, triathlete champion and a former firefighter turned health educator, and I am grateful to him for hiring me so that I could see firsthand uh, and, and hear these wonderful lectures. I, I, I heard Chef AJ learn so much from her, and uh, uh, Jeff Novick, and uh, there's Dr. T. Colin Campbell, uh, author of the book Whole, uh, with co-author um, Howard Jacobson, PhD, and we heard from many members of the Esselstyn family, including Rip's dad, the tall one there in the picture, is Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn, Jr. MD, Olympic gold champion, bronze star winner in Vietnam, and he did research to see, to show the world how a low-fat, plant-based diet reversed cases of heart disease so sick, so terminal, so hopeless, that they had been given up on by the cardiology department at Cleveland Clinic, where he practices as a surgeon. They were co-stars in this wonderful movie that I'm sure many of you have heard of, which helps you to know how to use food as medicine. I can't wait to hear Dr. Greger's talk tonight about food as medicine. And so I am uh, grateful that uh, I had the opportunity to be hired in part of as part of it, and so my husband, Sean Carney, and I, he's my um, full-time practice, full practice administrator. We closed the office for a week, we packed the medical supplies into a U-Haul, and we brought our staff so that they could draw blood and measure biomarkers on Monday morning and Friday morning of Immersion Week to show the fantastic results that this kind of food can do. And the results were phenomenal. We had blood pressures dropping. It was my job to take them off the medicines. Uh, cholesterol levels dropped. In fact, uh, one person dropped their cholesterol levels 100 points in five days. One person dropped uh, triglyceride levels 188 points in that week. 
And my job was to uh, carefully shepherd them through uh, taking them off their medicines. They ate all they wanted. They lost about a pound of body fat per day. And this slide helps us to understand that they were different from that show, The Biggest Losers, where they exercise so many hours a day and, and, and restrict their portions. No, the Whole Foods Market employees were the biggest winners because what they won was better health. Losing. Uh, a pound a day of body fat while eating all that they wanted, no portion control, and exercising only one hour a day, and it was voluntary. This is Rip's famous sweet potato lasagna, and I'm grateful that uh, Chef AJ is here. I always learn so much from her about how to, do, how to make this food fast, affordable, and delicious. And so we, we had a lot of fun at the Engine 2 immersion, and that's really important. Uh, group support is important, too. And so please, make friends with the people in, sitting in the chairs next to you. May, um, connect with those of us who are presenting. We want to give you resources that are going to help you with ongoing support so that you can have your own success stories to share with us. This is a, a few of the ways that you can connect with me. and. Uh, I want you to learn all you can while you're here at Health Fest and pick up some resources. They're, they're out there on the tables. What you eat can make a difference in your future uh, so that you won't be one of those 66% of Americans who need blood pressure medicine by age 65. The eight secrets of hormonal, hormonal balance that I uh, shared today are available for you to take home to prevent unnecessary hysterectomies. And, uh, there are athletes here to help you to understand how plants preserve your vitality and enhance your athletic performance. I want to get your questions answered here at Health Fest this weekend. And so thank you so much for listening and have a great time at Health Fest 2016.